My name is Mrs. Jill Metcalf. Um, my father was Mr. Frederick Hoskins, and this is a photo of him. He was 23 when Chamberlain um, declared war. And so that day, Dad went down and signed on for the duration. And um, two days later, he and my mum got engaged. He first enlisted in the Royal Army Service Corps, but on his return from France, he joined the Norfolk 18th Division of the British Expeditionary Force. He was sent to Singapore at the end of January 1941. He arrived in Singapore on the 5th of February 1942 and was there at the fall of February, uh, February the 15th at the fall of Singapore. He was um, imprisoned as from the 15th of February when they had to um, surrender and he stayed a Japanese prisoner of war until VJ Day in 1945. So he was a prisoner for three and a half years. He was imprisoned at first in Changi. Um, then he was sent to Ben Pong and then later to Non Pladuk for a couple of years and he was building the Death Railway. In September 1944, the Americans bombed his prison camp, resulting in him losing two fingers and having shrapnel in his leg. As a result of his injuries, he was taken to Nakwan Patham prison camp, where he stayed until the end of the war. But they did try very hard to sabotage the railway when they were building it. Um, they were getting bits of soap and dyeing them black and pretending that those were the bolts that went in. They would do anything they could to sabotage it, but it still survived. And he also had to keep all this money hidden because if the Japanese had found that, um, he would have been punished again. And one day, someone whispered to him that the Japanese were going to be doing um, searches of the huts, and Dad realised the money wasn't in its normal hiding place. So he very swiftly marched back to the camp, back to his hut, um, saluting all the Japanese officers on the way. And when he got there, he just buried all the money underneath the heel of his shoe and just hoped that he wasn't going to have to move. Um, food was so difficult to get that in the end, he sold his gold wedding ring for a bunch of bananas. And he did develop um, a form of diabetes called hemochromatosis, which is too much iron in your blood. And they think that's because the food that he did get was cooked in iron pots in the prison camps. Um, there were loads of flies and they would be given money for catching the flies. So they would then have to put the flies into something where they were burnt, but they would put a false trap in there so they could take the flies out and get paid for the same amount of flies twice. And they made sure that the people who were sick, who weren't getting paid, they were in charge of catching the flies. They made special traps for them. To keep their minds active, my dad and other prisoners um, decided to design a hostel for the homeless. And it was going to be called the Horseshoe because that was the shape it was going to be. And the project was taken really seriously because in the prison camp, they had solicitors, bankers, accountants, um, all sorts of professional people. So they drew up the plans and this building was going to be built in Bow in London. And it was to include a gym, games room, kitchen, restaurant, church, playground, rooms for visitors, self-contained flats. Anyway, at the end of the war, the prisoners all went their own ways, so it was never built. But Dad kept the plans and it did save many people's lives and it boosted their morale building this. Um, Dad was awarded the Pacific Venture Star in 1939 to 1945 and the King's Medal George VI. He was posthumously awarded the HM Armed Forces Veterans Badge. He decided that should he ever get out of the prison camp and get home, he would devote the rest of his life to the service of other people. And this he did because he became a secondary school teacher, chairman of Probus when he retired, um, chairman of the St. Matthew's Society, which helps people who are in prison 
find accommodation so they can get out of prison um, a little earlier. He was chairman of the school governors, a parish councillor, produced the village magazine. Um, and he was also in charge of the welfare for the surviving POWs in Norfolk. 